Hi everybody, we are the uh, Bird Nerds. I'm Trevor and this is Ashley. Um, we thought we'd make this video to talk about uh, the equipment we use uh, because we get a lot of questions about it, of uh, the cameras we use and the lenses. And uh, we've been at this for quite a few years now and we kind of, we learned a few lessons the hard way. We started out with uh, some pretty modest gear uh, and kind of worked our way up to where we're at now. Um, so we'll go, we'll go through all of that. We'll say where we started, our advice. Um, it's really, I'd say it would be useful to uh, beginner bird photographers on a budget uh, because that's kind of what we were um, and still are. We're not, we don't have the best gear by any means, but it's working well for us. So it should be useful um, to anyone that's looking to, you know, take their images further. And uh, that's really into bird photography. That's a bird nerd like us. Do you remember how we started, what we started with, um, as far as lenses? As far as lenses go, uh, we had the poor man's prime lens, which... Tele the poor man's telephoto. Which was um, digiscopes that we used, um, T-rings and certain different adapters to hook up to our DSLRs. Uh, it was a, a, a fixed focal length. Um, apro apochromatic yep. glass uh, telescopes. So yeah, the process is called digiscoping and it's basically you're looking through a telescope to get that focal length, like a telephoto lens, but a telescope of course does not have autofocus or image stabilization, uh, any of those things. So it was quite awkward. Like what was it like walking around at Point Pelee with a, a telescope on a monopod? Our first year at Peely, we brought these. Uh, it garnered a lot of attention from other photographers, wondering what kind of lenses we had hooked up to our cameras. Um, just really heavy, bulky. Awkward. Awkward, not mobile at all. We had them on a monopod. So forget shooting anything that's kind of above eye level because you end up tilting or getting down on your knees to shoot anything higher. It was just it worked in the sense that it produced sharp images when you were really on point, but we had to roll through the focuser and take like 80 pictures to hope that just one was that crisp, sharp photo that you were looking for. In hindsight, we, we definitely missed so many great shots because of it, um, but we did get some really incredible photos with it. We both had our own telescopes. Uh, and the focal length was around 400 millimeters. So if you know how much camera lenses at that focal length cost, it was pretty affordable. And I already had the telescopes because uh, I do a lot of astronomy stuff. So because we already had them and we got the focal length and we actually could get a, a usable image out of it, uh, we did that for a couple of years. And it was we still had fun doing it, but we knew we had to make a change um, and get some actual camera lenses. But before I get into that, we should just talk about the actual camera bodies that we use. Um, we both shoot with Canon 7Ds. Um, mine's the, the Mark I and Ashley with the Mark II. Uh, and there were some big improvements in the Mark II over the Mark I, including, I think the, uh, the frame rate actually was, is comparable. It's about 10 frames per second. So that burst shooting is uh, so useful for bird photography. Like, uh, uh, <laughs> spray and pray as they would call it so and it kind of explain that process Ash, like when uh, when you get when you have a great bird in your lens and, and the difference that shutter speed makes it makes a world of a difference um as trevor said before with our previous method we we in hindsight probably missed a lot of uh opportunities as you know birds don't stick around very long so it's a matter of bird lands lands on a branch you get them in uh, you get them in the frame and, and just get them in focus and hold that down and, and that way you're at least able to get different movements, different poses that the bird's doing, you know, if yeah, lots of those, options. Yeah, the birds move so quickly, so obviously even if you do find um, focus, that the bird is moving in and out of focus like very subtly, so by holding down the, uh, the shutter and getting that burst shot of 10 frames in a second, you'll get one sharp shot and nine very close to sharp shots. So um, when we're following a good bird, like a warbler in the spring, 
uh, we when, when we do finally get him out in the open and he's on the branch and the, we have the catch light and the sun's hitting him, we will literally hold down the shutter button and take a hundred shots within you know 10 to 15 seconds uh, and then we'll be able to pull two or three really great sharp shots out of there. So that shutter speed and the frame rate is really important and that's one of the big reasons why the 70 is one of the best cameras for bird photography. It's a crop sensor DSLR, it's not a full frame. The field of view is tighter with the crop sensor DSLR so it feels like you get a little more reach um, with your camera lenses um, because it does have a crop factor of 1.6 so it actually extends the reach of your lenses um, although with a full frame camera you could just simply crop in and get that same field of view. So one of the biggest differences between the Mark II and the Mark I was the way it handles noise. The, uh, the 70 Mark I got a lot of criticism for being uh, noisy at high ISOs and even around the, approaching the over 1000 to 1600 range, the, the images are quite noisy. So we're able to remove that in uh, processing in Photoshop, but uh, the, the Mark II handles itself so much better in uh, low light situations. So um, what are some of the situations where it's, we're in low light for bird photography? For birding, you know, you could be under the tree canopy, uh, so not a lot, a lot of light is getting through. Um, so that's one instance. Another is if you're shooting into the summertime and there's more leaves on the branches. Um, it could be covering a bird. It could be reducing the amount of light that's hitting him or her. Uh, so just kind of finding that sweet spot. Usually him because they're more colorful. Yeah. <laughs> and early morning or uh, later in the day. I mean, that is the best time to, uh, to shoot the golden hours because you get the, the sun low on the horizon, uh, lighting up the, uh, the birds and you get that full color and that golden catch light. And, but that's a little bit darker. So you need um, those faster shutter speeds and the uh, higher ISO is, is really, really handy. So that's the, that, those are the cameras, the 7D Mark I and Mark II. And we'll, we'll go into detail more and talk about those cameras uh, at a later time. But let's get on to the lenses. Ashley has here the Canon 400mm f5.6. This is one of the few camera items that we actually bought new uh, other than the, the bodies themselves. Um, so Ash, tell me what you like about this lens. I love this lens since the day I've got it. Since the day I got it, it's been so much fun to shoot with um, in combination with my new uh, 70 Mark II, it just the mobility that it offers while still offering that long focal reach is what really does it for me, um, especially for birding, um, being out in the field, you know, sh shooting a bird that's very mobile and quick like a warbler. Uh, it still offers great range of motion. It's not overly heavy. That's so um, important. Which is really, really important for my shooting experience. Um, if we're burning for eight hours, right? You yeah. have a heavy lens, you're, you're going to call it quits early if it's too heavy. And I think going back to where we started, we really now appreciate the mobility because we lacked it for so many years. So the, the really long 600 millimeters are great and the pictures that you get are fantastic. But for the type of birding that we really like to do, mobility is a huge factor for me and, I, and for you. So uh, I love the lens, just the shooting experience that it allows for mobility, crisp shots. It's a good 400 millimeters, a good focal length. I just, I really love this lens. For bird photography, it's hard to beat the 400 millimeter f5.6. Um, like Ash said, those, those bigger, longer lenses, I mean, you're going to get real amazing photos, don't get me wrong. The idea of walking around with a tripod all day on our shoulder, uh, and like, I just really can't picture us enjoying it as much as we do now uh, doing that. Uh, and I don't, I don't feel like we're holding ourselves back as far as our, our images, right? Maybe we won't get as many uh, amazing shots as those, the big lenses will get, but um, we sure have a lot of fun. Um, with these, this type of lens. So f5.6, that's the uh, aperture of the lens. Uh, that's considered, that's on the slower side. Uh, it's not 2.8 or f4 or anything. So all that means is that in those dimmer light situations, Ashley does have to bump up that ISO to get a brighter image uh, because the aperture affects the, uh, the light that's coming through the lens. 
On to mine, it's uh, this I bought used and I got a great deal on it and I put the uh, kind of tacky camo stickers on it. I still think it's kind of cool. Uh, it's a 300 millimeter f4, so it's a little bit faster than that lens, but it's a little bit shorter, so 300 millimeters. Again, prime lenses is the way to go. That's how you get the crisp shots for, 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 <laughs> for bird photography. A zoom lens uh, is, they're great and they're versatile and you can do, you have more options, but you're not going to get a, a crisp shot the way a prime lens will. So to get a little more reach, um, I've got the 1.4 uh, Canon extender. So that brings me up to 420 millimeters. So again, now we're, co we're very comparable as far as reach goes, uh, both of us shooting and that's evident in our photos when we, when we both uh, are going after a bird and we're looking at our photos, they're, they're usually quite similar. And it's kind of hard to tell who took what because uh, we're both in the same condition shooting right next to each other and get kind of competitive that way. Considering we also pretty much pressed down on our shutters at the exact same time, which is kind of funny if we're standing side by side and we're both do -do 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 and stop if the bird turns yes. or it's not the prime. Because uh... we're both looking for those same moments when it's like, okay, he's hopped from behind the leaves and now he's open on the branch. Okay, we both go nuts. Yeah. And it's the funny part is when he hops out into an open spot, but the background's too busy or the lighting's not right and you he don't hear either of us shooting because we know that's that's not going to work. The Both of our lenses actually do not do not have IS, image stabilization, so uh, that would be useful um, when shooting birds because they're a quick moving uh, target, but because of the fast shutter speed and um, shooting in the right conditions, uh, we're able to get away with that. Um, I'm sure we miss a few shots because of uh, that are a little shaky where we could really use the IS, but those lenses are a little more expensive. And uh, speaking of price, like I said in the beginning, a lot of our gear was, was purchased used, and the, the used uh, camera market is, uh, is actually quite good. Um, people tend to take care of their equipment uh, when it comes to DSLRs and lenses like this. If you want a rough estimate for, for what we've spent on this stuff, uh, the cameras we bought new, uh, the 7D Mark II was around $2,000 brand new. Mm -hmm. Um, but I would look for used ones if you're, you're trying to save some money there. Pay attention to the uh, shutter count though, uh, because that's kind of the mileage on the camera. Anything over say 30,000 30, is considered quite high. Um, and then the lens was, uh, was also purchased new. It was actually a Christmas gift for Ashley a few years ago. And it was about uh, around fifteen hundred. Yeah, about that. And that's this is Canadian we're talking. Yeah. So um, a little so, lower in, in U.S. dollars. All in for under four thousand for for this guy, which is to consider the amount of camera performance that you're getting for that price is quite good. Um, yeah, you're, we're with that. You're pretty much able to take professional bird bird photos. Um, I mean, the quality of the images is uh, you're not held back by any means. I was able to get an amazing deal on my 300 millimeter lens because it was a bit older and I found it on a classified site that's around here called uh, Kijiji and I actually made, I drove for an hour and a half to go meet the guy and it was, I uh, can't remember if it was six or seven hundred dollars for, for the 300 millimeter prime lens and that's a really, really great price. The, uh, the extender I also bought used from a camera store here called Henry's. Uh, and it was it was a bit pricey. I think it was about two hundred dollars. But either way, under a thousand dollars around there for the lens, and then the camera. You can really get some great deals on the Seven D Mark One. I. I would say that's probably the best value if you're just getting into bird photography. Look for a Seven D, a Canon Seven D Mark One. I've seen them used for under a thousand, like seven hundred dollars. That is just an incredible camera for that price. The little bit of extra noise that you get with this camera, you can easily clean that up in Photoshop after the fact. So yeah, that's that's where we're at to, for camera gear and I don't think we're looking to upgrade anytime soon. We're having so much fun with this stuff. Uh, yeah, like I don't know about you, but I, have any, it's not, I don't even consider any sort of upgrade um, in the near future for us because like I said, we're just getting great results with this. Yeah, and well for my 7D Mark II is fairly new. Um, anyone who reads the blog may have seen that my original Canon 70D uh, was stolen, so I ended up having to uh, make a quick upgrade. Um, and 
I mean, before that, we were using Canon Rebel out of the box entry level cameras. Um, so to go from there to where we're at now um, it has only made us appreciate, I think, our gear that much more. And we're so happy with what we have now. Yeah, we didn't jump right into intermediate to pro gear right away. It was a, it was a long process. So we really appreciate the uh, improvements along the way. Uh, that's a great point. Yeah. So thank you everybody for uh, subscribing to the channel. And if you're new, please subscribe. We do, we usually do more vlog style where we're actually out taking pictures and we share all the bird photos and we show that we're truly our nerds, uh, but it's something we do together. So hopefully that answers some questions about the gear that we use and uh, that you found it useful, uh, especially if you're just looking to get started. Um, just to summarize, look for prime lenses, a Canon 7D in the used market, you really can't go wrong. Um, and just remember things like mobility and uh, the actual fun and how long you, you can actually spend a day out shooting. Your overall shooting experience really makes that much of a difference. That's a big part of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to sustain uh, your enjoyment of the hobby, so um, that's important. But again, thanks everybody for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.